This whole um, pattern only has three different knots involved, so it's pretty basic. You have 20 of the strings, the longer strings. There's also one that's shorter, and that will be the one that you can use to hang it up. And we actually kind of suggest putting the one to hang it up with on in the beginning so that it holds these in place so they're not sliding around. I will hold it this way. I've met up the ends on the bottom and we've got our middle here in a loop. And I'll just put it onto my bar here and then pull it through. So you will put all of these onto your bar the same way. So you'll end up with 40 of these because there's 20 in total. So I've been just putting this behind the bar, pulling it over, and then grabbing the two strings that go down to the bottom and then threading it through. Behind. Pull it forward, your loop, yes. and then grab your two ends and pull them through. And then tighten. And tighten it. And I did look up some history of macrame. The first official record of it, they found that in 13th century, Babylonians and Assyrians were using that kind of style and it was documented in their sculptures that had the fringe-like plating and braiding adorning their clothing. 476 BC, they used knots in China for recording and uh, ruling methods similar to the Incans. And because of using the knots as tools that way, uh, knotting in China became popular before it really started taking off in the more macrame form as a decorative style. The official macrame style knots really started being seen in that 13th century with the Arabic weavers adding it to tie up the loose ends of handwoven textiles. And through trading mm -hmm. and the creation of these clothing items, it started spreading across the world. And actually the word macrame is believed to be derived from an Arabic word, macramia, which means striped towel, ornamental fringe, or embroidered veil. And then that shorter one is the one to hang it up with. Yep, and there's Sarah adding her hanging one. You can do it in the very beginning, or you can do it later. We just found it kind of helped hold everything in place. Mm -hmm. Then after you get them all on, you can kind of space them out how you want them to look. And you can still space them out later on while you're knotting. So with this score knot, we're going to take two from one of the loops here and two from the one next to it. Uh, you can work from either side, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take and put it behind these two, leaving this one behind it. And then I'm gonna take the leftmost one and pull it through here. And then I'm gonna pull that up and tighten it. And this is only the first half of this knot because then we're gonna take this side and put it behind the middle two and make sure that it's in front of your right one. And then you take the right one and pull it through and then tighten up. I take the one on the right and these two here in the middle, it's going to be under, under, under those two middle I ones. I kind of made a loop by pulling this to the right. 
Yep. And it's over the left one. And then I can grab through here and pull that left one through. So then yeah, the, left, the left one goes through your loop you made. I can tighten it. If that makes sense for the first part. And then on the second part, oh, you had a question. Did you get the first part, Jenny? It took us a little bit of practice. Yeah, and I had to look at the instructions each time I did this knot. Yeah, to that get picture it right. really helped me. The red and green strings. Okay. And then on the second half of it, you're going to do basically the reverse. So we're behind those middle two. We've made like a loop over here by holding it this way. The left side. And comes then under the middle two. My right string is behind my left one and like I can grab through the loop and pull yep and then over over and through this loop yep. oh yep. that string out and then tighten the two outside strings pull them tight I will actually show you the next row. You're going to take the two from the end and you want to move them out of your way because you're not going to use them. So it's only two, not part of the four. Um, so you can, the primary knots of macrame are known as the square knot. So we'll be doing the square knot for the major part of the project. And it was also known as the reef knot. Then various forms of hitching is also another uh, term. So it kind of comes from that sea life aspect, the naming of this different knot. We'll also be doing the half hitch in this project too. Um, square knot ends together. Yep.
And this is going to start making a triangle shape. So each row that we do, we're going to take two more and take them out of the equation, basically. Um, and eventually, you'll get down to just doing the one square knot. Here I've finished my row two, and Sarah has also finished her row two. She took the next two and then took those off of what you're doing. So she's got four that she's not knotting now on each end. And then it would just be doing square knots with the rest of them. So you take four. Do a square knot, take the next four, and do a square knot. You also want to make sure that you're not getting your strings out of order. So, like, sometimes they're a little more twisted, and you want to make sure that this is still part of the one that you need it to be part of. So when I'm ready to do the next row, I just take another two off and I don't knot those ones. I do have a little more history. The craft was taken through Spain, then Italy, and then spread throughout most of Europe due to the Moorish conquest. And in England, it was introduced at the court of Mary II in the late 17th century. Queen Mary taught it to her ladies in waiting. And after that, macrame was at the height of its popularity during the Victorian era. It was used on red linen, clothing, and other household uh, fabric decorations. After that, it kind of fell out of favor until the 70s when it got popular again. And actually, by early 1980s, it had already kind of dropped out of being popular. But it is starting to get popular again. After you get your triangle, you're going to be doing a half hitch knot and it's going to diagonally go down to this point down in the middle. So your rightmost and your leftmost one are going to be your lead strings that go down. And each one of these strings, as you go down, you're going to do this knot on it. I'm going to take my rightmost one and then take the one immediately to its left 
and do a half pitch knot. And that is basically a regular knot, if you think about it. So I'm gonna make that four again or nine and just pull through. And this one can be up here a little closer to the top. And that's the first half of it. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing again. I can seem to get to fit through before I drop it. So it'll look like that. Get that there. Now with that. You're going to take the one that was the far most right or the far most left if you're working from this side and you're going to continue doing that all the way down so i'm going to take the next one and wrap that around as a knot to make that full knot. And you always want that far most one that you started with to be the one that's going down. That I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one as my lead and this is nice and up close so we can see a little better. I'm going to take this first one here of the same color and just kind of loop in there. So it's just a loop around it. It's not very secure or anything. And then I'm going to loop again just like before and that holds it in place. So then you continue with the one that you started with. This is the one we used to not, we don't use that one anymore. And you're gonna loop around again. I've got my yellow one here so you can kind of see the difference between the two. And then I'm just gonna do the other half of it, which is the same thing, looping around and pull it through. So that holds it in place. And it's kind of going diagonally down this. Got another yellow one here. pattern we'll do another row of them but before we do the next row of the hitch ones I'm just going to do four more square knots with these four. I'm going to take the very far left and very far right one. I'm going to start here on my left side, and then you take the one next to it, and you're just gonna do a hitch knot. So the hitch knot is done by just looping it around like that. And with this one, I'm gonna move it down here so it'll end up lining up down this way. And then that's only half of the knot, so I'm gonna do it again. That right through that hole there. Pull it tight. You can adjust your hip shot after you've done them in case you decide that you don't like how long this is or if you want it longer. 
um, because they're pretty loose. So then this far left one I have here, you're going to continue it down, so it's the next one. You leave what you knotted with alone, you leave it behind. You do that same knot again with the next. I'm gonna just trim it so they all match the same length. And mine is actually that clothesline stuff that I can take and use the lighter on it to finish them, or I can leave them um, frayed. So Sarah's here that she did, that's the frayed look. Um, if you receive the clothesline one, I did actually uh, finish the end for you to work with so that it wouldn't fray a ton while you were working on it. I actually might leave this fray because I kind of like the look of that one. Let's see what it is. So I'm just kind of giving it a haircut. I can see they all line up. Or find a use for all the long strings that are cut off. I will show you on one of the scraps of how to do the uh, finishing of it. So here it is all frayed out. I'm just going to take the litter and very carefully put it around it. You don't want to put it too close to it because it will burn it and make it not pretty. And then so there. It is, it's already cooled off, so I can touch it. You can kind of feel that it feels plasticky and hard, and it is finished off on the end, so it won't fray out anymore. It kind of shrinks in, like if you've ever seen plastic get melted, it does that kind of thing. So I just stopped at the ladder here. Oh, I could do another ladder one with it, in which you would just take that bottom one and you do the same hit here. But I kind of just stopped at that point because I thought it was weird. Yeah, because if you continue the ladder to these two, it, it kind of looks weird. If you just stop it at this point, it looks good. I did the first one, but I didn't do the second one of the 